Welcome back to L'Chaim. We're with Professor Alan Dershowitz. Professor, again, thank you very much you. for being with us. Uh, recently, uh, the United States signed a uh, $60 billion uh, military deal with Saudi Arabia. What impact does that have in the Middle East? Well, the reason they signed the deal with Saudi Arabia is because Saudi Arabia was fearful of Iranian uh, nuclear bombs. So instead of threatening Iran, uh, what they did is try to build up Saudi Arabia. It won't work. It will cause the greatest arms race in history. It will end any kind of nuclear proliferation, and it will uh, put Obama in a situation where he'll be remembered, much like Neville Chamberlain was remembered, as very good on domestic issues, but failing to confront the greatest evil of his time, which is Iran today. And we also have uh, Lebanon as well, using uh, potentially of, of using military, uh, U.S. military equipment against Israel I as well. And you speak often of uh, proportionality in terms of what Israel's response mm -hmm. has been in the past. When is it okay for Israel to be disproportionate? Well, uh, a country should always be disproportionate against its military enemies. That is, uh, you should try to totally destroy the military that's threatening you. Uh, but always proportionate in uh, collateral damage and civilian casualties. The problem with Lebanon is up until now, Israel has not been at war with Lebanon, it's been at war with Hezbollah. And now that Hezbollah has taken over Lebanon, if Hezbollah attacks Israel, Israel is at war with Lebanon. It then becomes perfectly appropriate and proportionate for Israel to destroy Lebanon's infrastructure uh, without endangering civilian life. Uh, because it would be then a war between countries rather than a war between Israel and an organization, a militia like Hezbollah. So Lebanon ought to, ought to be very careful about allowing Hezbollah to provoke Israel, because if it does so next time, it will be a war between nations. Mm -hmm. Getting back to uh, the goal of what you're talking about uh, a lot lately is getting our kids, our Jewish youth, to uh, focus on their support of Israel. Right. Well, one of the reasons I wrote a novel recently called The Trials of Zion is because I'm a teacher, and I teach in the classroom, I teach in the courtroom, I teach in television interviews, and I teach through my books. And The Trials of Zion is an accessible book for young people. It's about young people. It's about a young woman who uh, just graduates law school and goes off to be a human rights uh, advocate in the Palestinian uh, territories and then falls in love with a young Arab man, gets in serious trouble, uh, gets kidnapped, uh, terrorist plots, uh, Iran figures into it, uh, Hezbollah and Hamas figure into it. It's a very realistic account of what's going on in the Middle East, and its purpose is to help inform through fiction uh, readers who won't read my nonfiction and who generally don't read uh, history and uh, political science books. So when I was a kid, and uh, the pride that we had in, in Israel and all it's accomplished and its ability to fight the fight in uh, the Six Day War and 73 and, and so forth, uh, that doesn't seem to exist today. No, and one of the reasons I wrote The Trials of Zion is when I was growing up, there was Exodus, the book Exodus by Leon Uris. Everybody read it mm -hmm. and everybody had pride instilled in them. I've tried to, re to write a book that is a current version of that you know, I'm, no, I'm not Leon Uris, and my book isn't as good as Exodus. I won't claim that. But so far, the reviews have been very good. And uh, it will help students and young people and people of all ages understand the conflict better. So how can we get uh, the Jewish youth more supportive and prideful for Israel? Well, one thing is to send them to Israel uh, on trips. So at Harvard Law School, we send students of all backgrounds, Jewish and non-Jewish, to Israel during the spring break. Um, we try to do it uh, through other groups as well. Go to Israel and you will be transformed and you will understand uh, what a wonderful country it is that it's contributed more to the world in 62 years than any other country in modern history. I know, uh, you know, you speak also of uh, getting Jewish youth to feel that being prideful about Israel is cool. It's cool. It's cool. It should be. Israel is a great country. It's environmentally sensitive. It's a country that uh, is gender uh, equal, it's a country that doesn't discriminate against gays, it's a country that has freedom of religion and freedom of speech, it's a country that has everything that young people should find cool. What's next for you? 
Who knows? I'm writing more books, and I'm actually trying to write an autobiography called Alan Dershowitz Takes the Stand, in which I talk about my background and my history. I'm also writing other things and litigating some cases and teaching and down in Florida, enjoying the sun. Very good. What would you like your legacy to be? I tried as hard as I could, and maybe I influenced some people. Um, I think my legacy will be as a teacher, and that's it's a great legacy because it really does continue from generation to generation. My students teach other students, and uh, it continues. A teacher never dies if he's a good teacher because his work continues. Very good. When you speak of uh, you know, a settlement and what, what could bring peace uh, to the, the Middle East, uh, do you believe that Jerusalem should be divided? I believe that Israel should have Jerusalem as its eternal uh, capital, but I think that Arab uh, sections, that have completely Arab sections of uh, East Jerusalem uh, should be under Arab control. I hope it doesn't have to require division, but uh, I think most Israelis don't want to control large Arab population centers, um, and I think most Arabs don't want to be under the control of uh, Israel. Um, that's their choice. I mean, Arab Israelis, of course, almost unanimously want to live in Israel. They don't want to become part of a Palestinian state. Jerusalem can be solved, and um, the bigger problem is going to be how to protect Israel's security. Are you optimistic for peace? I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, it's in the interest of both sides. Professor Dershowitz, thank you very, very much for your time oh, today on L'Chaim. Thank you. I enjoyed the interview. Thank you.